Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam and I have a fidget cube now. It's uh, not gonna lie, it's, it's pretty fun. But today is the moment we've all been waiting for. Well, maybe not all of us, but most. Or maybe not most, but some. Or maybe not even some, but all I can say for sure is that I've been waiting for it because we have the finalized results of the World Top 100 Character Poll. Which, in case you're unaware, this was an online globally conducted poll where every day for two months you could vote for a character of your choosing in a quest to discover the 100 most popular characters in all of the One Piece. This is incredibly notable because this is the first time that the world at large has been included in this process. It's usually confined to Japan and the method of voting is almost always exclusively physically mailed in because Japanese business practices tend to live in the 80s. But in this video, we are going to go through some of the more notable placements as well as detail in their entirety, the top 20. And if you think that you can predict these results, well, you might be right, but you're probably gonna be wrong, so keep watching. And of course, do remember to cast your vote for quality by subscribing to the Grand Line Review, thus resulting in consistent injections of One Piece culture administered straight into your YouTube feed. I mean, when I say quality, I mean a fully grown Australian man ranting about pirates in a dark room that is today colored purple. So it's a good thing that quality is subjective. Now to really get a sense of what we're dealing with here, during the World Top 100 poll, there were over 1,000 characters to vote for. And these range from the obvious Luffy, Zoros, and Sanjais, to the incredibly obscure beings like Fishman Nami or Bachi, Bachi the Fly, or whatever the hell this is if you watch the anime. They are both Bachi. So if Bachi was your choice, then that's great. You could vote for him like 60 times if you really, really really wanted to. And many people did because Banshee ended up placing 112th overall, defeating figures such as Charlotte Smoothie, Scratch Manapu, and even Sengoku. So that should give you an idea of what can happen with these polls. It's not a strict gun to your head, vote for your favorite character or else scenario. And fun little voting campaigns pop up all over the place, in this case, all over the world. And remember, this is not a scientifically approved method of gauging popularity. If it was, and I'd imagine we'd only get one vote instead of 60, and uh, less than 60 if you forgot to vote on some days. And mail-in votes would not have been worth 10 times the amount of online votes, which basically heavily skews the polls towards whatever Japan favors. Anyway, all of that serves as a bit of a disclaimer for a future discussion. But let's begin by examining the top 100. And immediately, I could not be happier to see Shushu scrape in at the coveted 100th place position. He is the goodest boy the series has ever seen, and he deserves all of the popularity. Now, as we work our way up, we notice Crackers, Kumas, and Kappas, and I don't know, it always weirds me out just how unpopular Bartholomew Kummer is. No matter what the poll, he ranks pretty low considering his status. Even more surprising though is that Big Mom got plonked in 86th place, which for one of the biggest figuratively and literally antagonists in the series, that's pretty abysmal to be honest. Meanwhile, Kung Fu Dugong pulled through in 89th, which is pretty impressive considering he isn't even an Emperor of the Sea yet. In 80th, we have Big News Morgans, followed closely by Orlumbus in 78th place. And I'd like to linger on Olumbus a bit because he's one of those fun voting blocks I was talking about. Apparently there was a large group of Russian fans who organized and campaigned for Olumbus for reasons that I have yet to discover. If you know, please do let me know, but good on them because it paid off. We also have another meme candidate in 71st place with Namu. And unlike Olumbus, I don't know the story behind Namu's support, but it's definitely a coordinated campaign. We find another Emperor of the Sea in 65th place. It is Kaido. And really, after seeing where Big Mom is ranked, this, this actually feels pretty good. Kaido is also very traditionally unpopular in 65th. Yeah, look, it's certainly an improvement over where he would usually land, which in the previous popularity poll was 97th. So actually, you know what? This is a massive improvement. Getting into some big names now. In 60th place, we have Gaimon. This is almost certainly due to Japan because Japan. Gaimon is extraordinarily popular over there and he's always been their meme candidate ever since the dawn of One Piece popularity polls. He usually does extraordinarily well for a guy who only appeared in a single chapter. And here I'd also like to flag Ulti in 56th place, which is astonishing. And I'm not gonna say too much about her because anime watchers, you haven't met her yet, but rest assured you are in for some fun. I love Ulti and I'm happy that the world seems to share that love. A third Emperor of the Sea appears in 46th place being Mr. Blackbeard. And you know what? Good on 
on him. Like Kaido and Big Mom, he doesn't usually get a ton of fans throwing votes in his general direction. It doesn't matter though, Teach doesn't need votes, he needs cherry pie. Oh, and there's also a very sweet thing happening here. We have Izo and Kiku in 48th and 47th place respectively. Very fitting because, you know, they're siblings and all. And look, I have no proof of this, this is just pure speculation, but I do imagine that this was a coordinated effort. Like there was a group of people who voted Kiku one day, then Izo the next, then Kiku again, and so on and so forth. Because this really is just too good to be true. However, if this is an unrelated coincidence, unlike Kiku and Izo who are related, then this is kind of amazing. Bartolomeo landed in 40th place, very respectable, and quite notably, he is the highest ranking character in the entire Straw Hat Grand Fleet. But now we get to the controversial moment because I would like to congratulate our Grand Fleet for their hard work because together we managed to get Whoopslap into 37th place. That is beyond incredible and you should all be proud. This man has been with us since the very first chapter and it's about time he got some recognition. And look, for everyone who disagrees with my campaigning for Whoopslap, yeah, fair enough. I get that a lot of people wanted a quote, serious poll. However, a lot of people, including myself, also wanted to have a fun poll with an unexpected story. Which, as it turns out, is also what Japan wanted because when Whoopslap ranked in 27th place during the midterm results, they loved this idea so much that they published the character in Weekly Shonen Jump advertising the poll, along with fellow meme candidate Olympus. And if you're still not convinced and need that extra tick of approval, well, Oda himself wrote a letter for the poll results, which acknowledged the efforts of people who got together online to vote specifically for unexpected characters, and he laughed at the idea. So Oda himself is very much amused by this, and I think this sort of variety is exactly what these sorts of polls need. To me, there is just no fun in stringently, religiously voting for the same character who is guaranteed to do well every day for 60 days straight. So I wanted to spice things up a bit. And so did an awful lot of you guys. And as a reward for everyone who did vote for Whoopslap, I now have the pleasure of informing all of you that the top 50 characters from this poll are going to be featured in a color spread drawn by Oda. So in the tiniest and most non-destructive of ways, you have all had a direct and accountable effect on One Piece history. And I think that's pretty awesome. Whoopslap was the highest ranking meme candidate though, and everyone from here on out is a pretty big name. But our first straw hat is going to be Frankie in 28th place. And I don't know about this one, man. That uh, feels a bit low for Frankie, but not too far in front of him is Brooke in 26. And I guess they're still incredibly high in the grand scheme of things, but they're just nowhere near the other crew members. So yeah, I guess we know where the fan base priorities are. They're with Kozuki Oden, rather astonishing who landed in 24th, which is so crazy, but ever so cool. I think his flashback is probably my favorite in the entire series. And then capping us off here is Bonclay in 22nd and Nefertari Vivi in 21st, which may surprise some people, but not me because Vivi always does well. In fact, she has never once ranked outside of the top 30. So there is an extraordinary amount of Vivi love coming from uh, somewhere and I appreciate that. Meaning that we have now reached the illustrious top 20, which which we will be revealing one by one, commencing with our illustrious 20th place finisher, Don Quixote Do Flamingo. The heavenly demon acquired just under 100,000 points. And just to explain what these are, because we haven't encountered them before now, one point basically equates to one vote, except for mail-in votes, which count for 10 points each. Just keep that in mind going forward, because things are quite skewed in Japan's favor. But Do Flamingo is no surprise. Quite frankly, if he was in any other series, he'd be firmly in the top five, if not pushing for that number number one spot. Stupidly captivating character, and it really does speak to the quality and love of One Piece that there are a whole 19 contenders that still finish above him. One of which is our resident Phoenixman Marco, which is shockingly similar to his placement in the previous character poll where he landed in 20th. However, in the past, Marco has ranked as highly as 12th. So at this point, he is essentially a staple of One Piece, which I think is particularly impressive because he even outranks his Captain Whitebeard who finished in 31st. Finally, breaking 100,000 points, Points, though in 18th, we have our beloved whale shark Jinbei. And whilst this might seem amazing, and yeah, it is, he did beat both Brooke and Frankie, but this is actually a bit of a downgrade for Jinbei. In the previous poll, he landed in sixth. So we've actually had a pretty big momentum shift away from Jinbei. For 17th, we land on the one and only Sir Crocodile. This man has stood the test of time. He's another one of those characters who has never, I repeat, never landed outside of the top 30. And he seems to only gain popularity over time, weirdly enough. He is the OG Warlord of the Sea, and I am so glad to see him here. In 16th, we find Tony, Tony Chopper. Now I imagine Chopper fans will probably feel that this is a bit low, and yeah, it might be. 
but I think it is to be expected because he really has had a bit of a, a slow, um, 10 years in the story, I, probably more. He just hasn't been given a lot of opportunities, but Chopper is still more than lovable to make up for all of that. Although, and I have to point this out, there was a very, uh, how shall we put this, interesting moment during the live stream announcement. The female presenter said that she would like to have Chopper as a pet, and then Greg immediately coughed and brought attention to his Chopper hat, which, uh, you know, come to your own conclusion with what that implies. But we have another straw hat in 15th place where we discover one God Usopp. And this is actually no change whatsoever. He was 15th in the last character poll as well. So it looks like his global popularity almost exactly mirrors his Japanese popularity, which is great. I like that he's such a universally appreciated character and that will not be the case for some going forward. Because if at this stage you thought you could predict the rest of this list, I am here to tell you that you are very wrong. There are some pretty big surprises coming up. Not necessarily in 14th though, where Charlotte Katakuri clocks in at over 150,000 points. And it is my pleasure to announce that this makes Katakuri officially the most popular antagonist in One Piece to date. And in my opinion, he 100% deserves that accolade. He is such a tough act to follow. And I honestly believe that Kaido appears as uh, quite lackluster as a character compared directly against Katakuri. And the voting public would appear to agree. But to something that really shocked me now in 13th place, we have Don Quixote Rosinante. Just let that settle in for a second. This character who has only appeared in flashbacks still has such a strong command over the fan base, even to this day with dress Rosa long since completed. And that honestly leaves me shocked, but in a great way. Rosinante is undeniably fantastic. And I suspect that his close connection to Law and Doflamingo does help fuel this placement quite a bit. You know, he has the aesthetic flair of Doflamingo and the heart of Trafalgar Law. So he's almost genetically engineered to land somewhere between the two of them. And there may be a similar effect happening in 12th place, which is Shanks. And now this does seem about right. Shanks used to be a very standard staple of the top 10. However, he was edged out barely in the last poll ranking in 11th. And you know, for a man who really hasn't done much of anything in 25 years of storytelling, 12th place is still phenomenal. Just imagine where he'll be when Shanks's story does eventually play out. I need to give a slight warning now, 11th place is going to shock you. It's going to shock manga readers because of who it is, and it's going to shock anime watchers because they don't know who it is. And it is Yamato. And not only that, but Yamato defeated Shanks by almost 90,000 points. And I'm not gonna say anything specific about Yamato for the sake of anime only watchers. You've got something to be excited about though. And I guess I'm a big Yamato fan, but I think this is a prime example of the recency bias in effect. Yamato is very, very important at the moment and at the forefront of the minds of manga readers. But even then you need to consider that manga readers were not the only ones voting in this poll. And so for Yamato to reach such astonishing numbers, despite being a complete unknown in the eyes of anime watchers is, well, it's, it's undeniably amazing. I don't know what else to say. Even with recency bias, this is wild. That of course brings us to the top 10, beginning with Sabo, which features another gigantic leap in votes, although this is actually a slight downgrade for Sabo, as he was in ninth place in the previous poll and fifth in the poll before that. Honestly though, that is being very nitpicky because the top 10 is still nothing to scoff at and Sabo is a force of popularity to well and truly be reckoned with. But in ninth place this time around, we have the original Fireboy podcast Ace. And this is where the truly shocking results really start to begin. Because if you think of the characters that are left, it's pretty unheard of for Ace to be losing to a fair few of them. Ace usually lands in fifth or sixth quite reliably. So this ninth position is certainly a sign that there are some interesting forces at play in this particular poll. One of which is the absolutely wild eighth place finisher, Carrot. This is the most unexpected result to me thus far. I mean, I always knew that Carrot had a very solid and wide ranging fan base, but this, uh, this is something else. Although I will point out that this Carrot placement is very much the doing of the Western world, which we can measure, because Carrot did absurdly well in North America, Latin America, Europe, and Oceania. Meanwhile, if you look at Japan, Carrot was 24th. And that's one of the fun things about a poll like this, because it allows us to dissect global trends. And this led to another fun moment during the live stream where Greg was forced to, to explain the concept of furries and the Japanese hosts were just completely bewildered by the idea of dressing up as rabbits and foxes and stuff. But here's the thing, unlike Whoop Slap or Lumbus and everyone else, this was not a vote simply for the fun of it. Carrot support is very natural and once again, very, very widespread. But barely securing victory over our rabbit friend in seventh place is Boa Hancock. So Boa is an interesting one because she is actually one of the rare characters who has never placed outside of the top 10. Although to be fair, she's actually 
actually not participated in like half the polls due to being introduced quite late in the grand scheme of things, but that doesn't matter. And by the way, if you're confused by how highly Hancock ranks, the theory from an editor of One Piece is that it's because she expresses such a strong love of Luffy. So strong that Boa Hancock becomes a POV vessel for readers and watchers to basically insert themselves into who also love Luffy. Which is, it's certainly an interesting thought and quite believable. Although I'm going to go ahead and say that she has um, particular assets that may or may not compel a certain type of person to vote in her favor as well. The combination of which result in extreme popularity on all sides of the fence. In sixth place though, we have Nico Robin with a shocking vote leap, dwarfing Hancock's total by over 200,000 votes. And look, man, Oda, I don't know, if there was ever a clearer sign that we need more Robin action, then this is definitely it. Now at this point, we have five obvious characters remaining. We know exactly who is going to be in the top five just via process of elimination. However, we do not know the order in which they will appear. Each of them are quite formidable in their own right, but I have to say that in fifth place, we have Trafalgar Law. Not at all unexpected for him to be in the top five, although I think some Law fans might have been hoping for fourth, maybe even third, second, if you're feeling particularly ballsy. But this does mean that positions one through four will all be filled by Straw Hat crew members. The monster trio and Nami, who is a monster all on her own. She don't need no trio. Which we can see because in fourth place, we actually have Sanji. And I audibly gasped when this was revealed because there was no universe where I saw Nami outperforming Sanji. Although perhaps I should have because I live in Nami Ground Zero, as it turns out. In my region of Oceana, Nami came first and she also came first in Latin America and Europe. She also did phenomenally well in other regions, all of which combined landed Nami in third place overall, becoming one of only three characters to breach that one million point barrier. And what else can I say? Nami is exceptional and it's great to know that she has this insane amount of support, especially considering that I feel like from anecdotal experiences, she is often cited as one of the least popular straw hats. Turns out, no, that's not true. But this does leave us with our classic one and two struggle, Luffy versus Zoro. It always comes down to these two, almost except that one time where Law infiltrated the second place. But on this particular occasion, it is no different to most with Zoro securing second place. Although Zoro did place first in the regions of the Middle East and Africa, which means that for the seventh time in a row, Luffy has secured victory as the most popular character in One Piece. Comfortably sailing to first place with almost 200,000 more points than Zoro. And look, Zoro is my favorite character in the series, but I have to say I am incredibly relieved to see Luffy in the number one spot. It's just how things should be. And the regions of Asia, North America, and Japan agree, all of which crowned him as their favorite, but this is our captain. And as much as there may well be over a thousand cool, quirky, and compelling characters in One Piece, Luffy is the man in charge of helming this beast of a world. So I could not be happier. And if you'd like to check out the rest of the rankings, then I'll have a link in the description below. But otherwise, if you'd like to explore the nature of the One Piece fan base a bit more, then I have this video exploring the strangest, weirdest, yet potentially true theory that has ever been generated. Lots of fun to be had, so I look forward to seeing you there.